Hi, I'm Rob Cram, and today we're taking a look at the very controversial Husk Japan. So I previously did a video on my YouTube channel which spoke relatively favorable for the knife. Now, I have to admit from the off that my knife experience is of a regular person that would just use it in a regular kitchen at home. So one thing as well, I'm going to say this, is that most people in the UK at least, they're going to buy their meat pre-packaged, pre-cut, and they're not going to have much use for boning and doing all sorts of stuff like that. So my video was titled, Is This Worth It For Regular Kitchen Use? And I came to the conclusion that yes, it was. Now, I wasn't sure about the origins of the knife. But if you look on the website for Husk, they made a lot of claims that were quite frankly dubious and misleading. And also another thing as well is their claims that they made on their website never really sort of implicated them too much because they were very careful with the choice of words that they used. So for example, they said that their knife making techniques, they, they were inspired by that. So you can be inspired by anything. I can be inspired by many different things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's how my knife or, my, or whatever is is made. So a lot of people pointed out to me in the video that the claims that it was made using a 1810 steel was a load of rubbish, and that that steel is useless. It's meant for pots and pans and flatware. And my belief, and I, met, I mentioned this in the comments, was that basically Husk which is a Lithuanian company, decided to just do look it up and say, oh yeah, that looks like high quality steel. We'll just call our knives made with that. So what seems to happen then, and this is where we're going to go now. I ordered one of these knives from, not from Kwanki, or it might have been from Kwanki. I ordered one several months ago from AliExpress and you can see my order there. Uh, is there a date? Yeah, August the 21st. So I ordered that pretty soon after I'd got the husk knife to do a comparison of the two knives. So if we look here now, Kwanki is another company that, you know, is selling the same knife. It's exactly the same knife as the husk knife. And I'm going to show you in a minute the um, comparison of them both together. But as you can see, Husk are asking for £29 for one knife. And that doesn't include any shipping. Whereas the one on AliExpress is only asking for about £10. So that's a third of the price. Now I have to say that my knife only just literally arrived a few days ago. And that was cost couple of quid for the shipping now you can have other shipping options which will get it to you quicker but you know i was prepared to wait the long shipping time from china so going back to another issue with husk knife husk or husk however you want to pronounce it they say on their terms and conditions that the knife isn't for professional use the knife is for regular kitchen use and the knife ship is manufactured in china so what is easily discernible about all of this is that what seems to happen is on AliExpress you can sort of buy bulk orders of these knives for about get them down to as low as three or three or four dollars per knife if you start buying two thousand of them so what has happened here and this is my estimation now my speculation i'm saying it's speculation because i don't have any actual proof but this is what's most likely they bought a whole bulk wholesale price in fact even Quan Key offer wholesale price if you contact them, they bought 2000 pieces or more, got the price down to about $3, $4 per knife, and then did a load of bullshit marketing on their website to say how it's made, etc., and then sold them for a massive markup of $29 for one knife. A huge markup from the amount of cost. Now they did make a little nice box that it came in, which is probably worth a couple of dollars at the most, if that mass produced box and yeah i recommended the knife i said yep yeah. i said it's probably way too expensive it's way cost way more than what it's actually worth but in terms of using it in the kitchen and i still use it today it's absolutely fine for chopping up veg uh chopping up like breasts of chicken it's chopped it's, it's fine it's held its edge so far although it has dulled quite a lot since uh i first bought it so i still stand by this is a decent knife it's not going to be the best knife and it's very expensive. A decent knife for just regular cutting vegetables in the kitchen, which is what most people are going to be using a knife for. Most people. So I stand by my video that says, is this suitable and worth it for kitchen use? Well, yeah and no. The problem is you can get this exactly the same knife for a third of the cost. Therefore, I can't recommend the Husk knife anymore. Yeah, it's going to work. You're going to get it. It's not a scam. You'll get the knife. It comes in a nice box, but you've paid 
way too much price for it. That's what happens. They've laser etched it as well with their name. They've made a misleading Husker Japan name to suit their sort of rubbish marketing. And you end up with a knife that is worth, that costs them a few dollars to buy and you've just paid 30 pounds for it. So someone's making some good money if they manage to sell all of those units, which they probably have with all of their YouTube advertising. And that's how I initially came to find out about the Husk Knives was through a YouTube advert. And yeah, it's a bit of a novelty shape as well. And I'm sure many chefs will tell you that that shape is not ideal for many different ways of uh, cutting, but you have to use a specific cutting action to suit the blade that you're using rather than a long flat blade, which I'll show you in a second. So that's the crux of it. So let's now take a look at the knives together and how they look side by side so you can see exactly that they the similarity well they're not even similar they're exactly the same in every single way okay do it so here we can see the husk knife effortlessly chopping an onion finely chopped onion works pretty fine and this is after months of use as i've said the blade has dulled it's not as sharp and this is a newer version of the same knife it's going to cut through that onion a lot more easier than the husk knife you can just feel it when you're chopping but that's how the husk knife was when we first got it since then it's just done a lot of work in the kitchen so obviously naturally the blade is going to dull it still does what it says on the tin and this is the um, cheaper knife from Quan Ki that you know works fine chopping up this onion so these knives do work that's the point they do work for chopping up vegetables and i'm going to show you the chopped veg a chopped onion close up yep nicely done that's great for cooking if you're just going to be chopping up onions so we move on now to potato peeling potato again that's something that a lot of people will be doing first here's the husk knife so i'm just going to chop that and it has no problem just slicing through the skin of the potato i mean it's uh, not a hard thing to chop and I just slice that bit off there and then that's it. I just finish that off and then I'm slicing the potato. But potato is pretty soft. Absolutely no problems at all for this sort of basic kitchen use. So it, it does need sharpening. If I want to get that knife to be exactly the same as the cheaper one I got from Quan Ki, then I need to sharpen it. And for that, I might need a whetstone sharpener. I'm not sure an automatic sharpener is going to be good for this type of blade because of its shape so these knives work in the kitchen for vegetables and i'm going to say it again i think most people will be chopping vegetables in their kitchen rather than slicing through loads of different meat and gutting out fish in the uk at least you can get most of that all pre-done for you in your supermarket so you're not going to be buying a whole fish and chopping its guts out and doing that and requiring the right sort of boning knife to be able to do all of that but the takeaway here and you can obviously get a takeaway if you like. The takeaway here is the price you are paying for these knives. And I think some people might even suggest that paying £12 for the um, Quan Ki knife is still too much. They're only worth a fraction of that cost. And you could probably get a more competent knife um, from your local supermarket at a fraction of the cost of that in a knife set. It's finding some difficulty getting through the skin side of the pepper. I will admit that now. Uh, you probably can't see that f properly on the video. But the sharper, newer version of that knife has no problem cutting, cutting through the pepper at all. So yeah. I don't recommend Huss knives. I've said that before, saying it one last time. I don't recommend a Huss knife. If you're going to get one of these knives for the novelty of having that knife, then get the one from Quanky. You might have to wait a long time for it to arrive, but it's a knife you make do with your other kitchen utensils or you pay a bit more to get that knife shipped quicker so take that as you will one thing i will say lastly i did record it but i deleted the video i did use the newer knife and the husk knife to chop some bacon streaky bacon thick sliced thick, streaky bacon from a packet and the newer knife went through it very easily the husk knife not so well it wouldn't get through the uh, fatty bit so yeah it does need sharpening if you want to start cut, cutting through certain types of meat but it did do okay cutting through breast of chicken okay i'm gonna leave it at that i'm rob cram thanks for watching